She just goes a little mad sometimes. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the scenes when a movie made a complete 180 on its audience. We're not just talking plot twists, we're talking about moments that took such a sharp turn that everything after feels like a different movie entirely. We're revealing some key plot points, so a huge spoiler alert is in effect. He took and took from me until I no longer existed. That's murder. Number 10. Waiting by the Phone Audition The first part of Japanese auteur Takashi Miike's endurance testing film features the widower Shigeharu auditioning various women for the role of his next wife. He meets a woman named Asami who meets his meticulous criteria and sees a future with her. Then, things get weird. He finally calls her, only for it to be revealed that she's been waiting by the phone for his call for days. And then the large human-sized sack in her apartment begins to move. We know immediately that Shigeharu hasn't made a good choice. Though this is the first moment the movie really starts ratcheting up the tension, the pleasure and horror of audition is how it constantly doubles, then triples down on Asami's evil. Number 9. The Car Crash – Death Proof Forget the other guys You'll never fall It's time you go home time Quentin Tarantino's half of the Grindhouse double feature follows four women on a night out in Texas. In the first part, he lets us spend time with these women and grow to care for them. So how about it? Boys or just us girls? Mm, us girls. Then, he brutally dispatches them in a horrendous, intentional car crash orchestrated by Kurt Russell's sadistic stunt driver. Tarantino spares no detail. Limbs fly, faces are obliterated by tires in graphic slow motion. He even pauses to make sure we get to linger on every single character's death in the moment of impact. The movie then cuts to the next year with a new group of women who get to enact a karmic revenge on the stuntman. Number 8. The Basement – The Cabin in the Woods There are a lot of signs that something is not right in this standard horror movie setup of doomed college kids going to a secluded cabin. As it turns out, the whole movie is a meta-commentary on the genre. Guess how we're slowing down cognition. I don't know. The hair dye. Dumb blonde. Very artistic. The characters are actually caught up in an ancient storytelling ritual engineered by a secret underground lab. In the cellar of the old house are various objects that will trigger a different horror movie scenario. What is that? Diary of Anna Patience Buckner, 1903. When the characters read from a diary, they unknowingly trigger a plague of murderous zombies. The movie is pretty unique in that a genre shift is explicitly part of the story. That's not fair. I had zombies too. Yes, you did. Yes, you had zombies. But this is zombie redneck torture family. See, they're entirely separate species. Number seven, Tesla's arrival, The Prestige. First time I tried to change the world, I was hailed as a visionary. Second time, I was asked politely to retire. <laughs> This period thriller stars Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale as two feuding magicians. Their growing rivalry leads to a game of one-upmanship that leads them to a fictionalized version of real-life inventor Nikola Tesla. Hold out the other hand. By the enigmatic and ethereal David Bowie, Tesla's appearance isn't just a plot point, it turns a story about illusions into something entirely different. In The Prestige, Tesla is not just a genius inventor, he's also a magician of sorts. When I told you I could make your machine, I spoke a simple truth. Then why isn't the machine working? 
Because exact science, Mr. Angier, is not an exact science. His transportation device puts both of the illusionists in touch with the supernatural and turns a previously earthbound story into something dark and fantastical. Number 6. Piles Breakdown Full Metal Jacket 762 millimeter Full Metal Jacket Stanley Kubrick's meditative epic on the cost of war doesn't start on the battlefields, but in the claustrophobic and abusive atmosphere of boot camp. We watch as Gunnery Sergeant Hartman and fellow soldiers abuse and haze Private Lawrence, nicknamed Gomer Pyle, to the point of a psychotic break. Are you allowed to eat jelly donuts, Private Pyle? Sir, no, sir! And why not, Private Pyle? Sir, because I'm too heavy, sir! Because you are a disgusting fat body, Private Pyle! Pyle murders the drill sergeant and takes his own life. The second half catches up with Pyle's fellow recruit Davis as he and his compatriots fight in the 1968 Tet Offensive. I wanted to be the first kid on my block to get a confirmed kill. Although they really do feel like two separate stories, they both deal with the psychological impact of fighting a war even before deployment. Number 5. The Iceberg, Titanic Obviously, you go into a movie about the Titanic knowing it's not going to end well. So it's not a shock that it turns into a disaster movie in its second half. But what James Cameron's best picture winning epic does so well is to truly sell the romance at its heart. Jack and Rose's relationship is not just a distraction to hold us over until the dazzling special effects and tragic climax. Their story of love, class difference, and danger on the high seas was traumatic enough to be a movie all its own. Never let go. I will never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Number 4. They're Vampires From Dusk Till Dawn Welcome to slavery. No thanks. I already had a wife. Screenwriter and co-star Quentin Tarantino's voice is strong in this story of Seth and Richie, two brothers and armed robbers fleeing from justice. The pair take a family as hostages and hole up in a deserted strip club. There, they meet the sexy Santanico, and things quickly take a turn for the undead. In her eyes, a distant fire light burns bright. What begins as a standard crime movie soon becomes something very, very different. The bar reveals itself to be a haven for a horde of vampires. The brothers suddenly find themselves starring in a creature feature, pitting them and their hostages against bloodthirsty creatures of the night. Number 3. The Housekeeper Returns – Parasite it's low-key hilarious to watch the Kim family insert themselves into the lives of a rich family by becoming trusted domestic servants. But one night while their employers are away, the housekeeper they cheated out of her job shows up. It's an incredibly eerie scene, full of dread and played like an inverted home invasion. Suddenly, the atmosphere of the entire movie makes a complete turn. Her arrival signals the beginning of a life and death struggle. The subsequent revelations about the house turn, its satirical class commentary into a sinister and creepy scenario, straight out of a horror movie. <laughs> Number 2. I'm so much happier now that I'm dead. Gone Girl. When Amy Dunn goes missing, it sets off a media frenzy that soon lands her husband Nick in the sights of an angry mob and a dogged homicide detective. What did you do to your pregnant wife? That's fine. You tell him that, Nick. You tell him Amy was six weeks pregnant. But halfway in, we realize several things. One, Amy is actually alive. Two, the diary entries that Amy has narrated to tell us the story of her marriage are almost entirely fake. To fake a convincing murderer, you have to have discipline.
you befriend a local idiot. Three, Amy is a true blue sociopath who has staged her own disappearance and presumed murder to frame her husband. Her voiceover monologue at this point is a punch right to the gut. And if I get everything right, the world will hate Nick for killing his beautiful pregnant wife. For the first time, we realize this isn't a murder mystery at all. It's a twisted psychological thriller about marriage as imprisonment. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Blue Stuff, The World's End. Midlife crises and pub crawls have nothing on an android apocalypse. His head just came off! No, Gary, you are not gonna wriggle out of it this time. <laughs> the Horse People, sorry to bother you. The incisive social commentary takes a turn for the bizarre when the Equus Sapiens show up. Same fight. <laughs> Equisapiens, let's be out. Evelyn's first verse jump. Everything everywhere all at once. A laundromat owner pays a visit to another universe. What's happening? Look, I'm talking to my ex-husband. Like I said to you before. You're mingling with your... It's you messing with my head. Shh. What do I don't she me? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Shower Scene – Psycho In 1960, Alfred Hitchcock pulled the biggest bait-and-switch in movie history. Although he was the master of suspense, and he'd filmed some thrilling sequences, he rarely touched the horror genre. Psycho initially sets up a potential love triangle between a woman embezzler, her lover, and the motel proprietor who lives with his domineering mother. Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. But as soon as star Janet Leigh is brutally slashed to death in the motel shower, audiences are thrown for a loop. Suddenly, our focal character is dead. What started as a story about a woman on the run turns into a psychological character study about a lonely, haunted man who cleans up after his homicidal mother. And of course, that's not even the biggest twist in this all-time classic. Mrs. Bates. What's your favorite movie that completely switches things up halfway through? Let us know in the comments! Alright, open your eyes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.